Hi everyone, I'm Samantha and we're back with another camera review. This is the Canon EOS R7 that I have with me and it's the latest APS-C mirrorless camera from Canon. Priced at just $2,000 for the body, it makes a great and affordable mid-range alternative to heavier full-frame mirrorless bodies that might cost a lot more. Even as a seasoned photographer, I find the idea of shooting wildlife and sports pretty daunting. That's why I like how the R7 is targeted at experienced hobbies who are hoping to slowly ease their way into the world of shooting wildlife and sports. Without all the frills of a heavy body and a heavy tele lens. Launched together with the R10, both cameras are the first in the EOS R system to be equipped with the APS-C image sensors. The R7 has a lot going for it. It's got a fast performance 32.5 megapixel CMOS sensor, in-body image stabilization, weather seals, and dual SD card slots. To put the camera to the test, I took it with me to Night Safari as well as the Sungin Bulu Wetland Reserves just to see how well it fed in capturing fast-moving animals in sometimes low-light conditions. I also took it with me to Mount Faber to capture cyclists on their morning ride. And here's my verdict on the camera. Now let's talk about the look and feel of the camera. Being very used to full-frame bodies like my Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, I found that the R7 body was pleasantly light. It weighs just 610 grams. The camera's got a solid and robust feel with a heavily rubberized grip that allows me to shoot with a single hand. That said, when I was on the night safari tram ride, I did have to stabilize the camera because I was shooting in pretty low light conditions and animals were pretty far away from me. When I was shooting at the Sungin Bulo Wetland Reserves, I also found that single hand shooting wasn't quite enough to stabilize the camera while it was trying to track the fast moving animals up in the trees. When I was shooting the cyclists at Mount Faber, single hand shooting worked perfectly fine except for certain parts where for instance, at a sharp turn where the cyclists were going a little faster than usual and I did have to stabilise it with both hands too. The camera's seals against dust and moisture left me quite confident enough to shoot even in the light drizzle. Its overall compact feel reminds me of both the EOS R6 as well as the older EOS R cameras while departing slightly from the EF body. The rear display is quite standard being a 3-inch 1.62M dot fully articulating display with a resolution of 900 by 600 pixels. Onward to the sensor, powering the EOS R7 is a newly developed 32.5 megapixel CMOS sensor that's pretty similar to what was used in the EOS 90D and EOS M6 Mark II. This is paired with the Digic X image processor for images that are very crisp and precise. I found this very obvious when shooting close-up of both humans and animal subjects. The texture of the feather, the hair, and the fur were all beautifully captured. Alright, let's talk about the dials and controls. Although the design of the camera is mostly intuitive like most Canon bodies tend to be, the dials and controls took me some getting used to. The rear button layout is said to be the first of its kind in the EOS Canon series. With the command dial located next to the AF button that's pretty much next to the electronic viewfinder. Normally, the command dial is placed where the thumb is naturally rested when holding the camera. While shooting, I found my thumb instinctively reaching for where it used to be but soon got used to it. Other than that, seasoned Canon users will find the controls familiar. On the top right, you'll find the usual suspects like the power switch, shooting mode dial, video recording button and the dedicated ISO button. Plus point, there's a lock button to prevent users from accidentally switching the shooting mode dial. While shooting animals at night safari, I found it easy to switch between shooting stills and video as and when necessary as the dials were so near to one another. Other essential features that can be found on the camera's sides include the two USH2 SD card slots on the right and ports on the left, including the microphone port, headphone jack, HDMI port, quick release port and a USB-C port that's protected by silicone flaps. Alright, let's talk about the autofocus. When it comes to autofocus, the camera doesn't have separate face and tracking modes. Instead, it's nicely integrated with the AF zone modes. It's pretty straightforward to use as I can simply choose the area for tracking and the face eye detection will be automatically applied. For people, the subject tracking works best for the eye, head and face. 
For animals, it tracks the eye, head and body. And for motor sports, it tracks cars and bikes in all AF area modes. In bright daylight, subject tracking was a breeze to use. Whether I was trying to shoot an insect or a butterfly on a leaf, or even a bird that's perched on a branch. But sometimes with limited light sources, maybe at the night safari or high up in the trees, I found that the tracking sometimes focused on the branches and foliage instead of the animals itself. I used the sports mode to shoot cyclists going down a slope and found that the continuous tracking mode was able to automatically identify the cyclists' faces and bikes, keeping them sharp even when the surroundings blur out. That said, this mode didn't work so well when I zoomed the lens in as there was a bit of lag time in re-identifying the AF areas. When shooting, the camera's shutter was also relatively quiet, perfect if you're waiting for wildlife to appear. The electronic shutter's silent mode also gives you the option of shooting in complete silence. A highlight of the R7 is the high-speed continuous shooting function, which is perfect for those who are new to wildlife photography like myself. The EOS R7 is capable of up to 15 FPS high-speed continuous shooting in both mechanical and electronic first curtain shutter modes with AF AE tracking. It's said to have the fastest speed not just among all APS-C EOS cameras but also in the EOS R series. What's pretty impressive is that this is almost on par with the EOS 1DX Mark III, Canon's flagship DSLR, which can shoot up to 16 FPS with the optical viewfinder. Because I never knew when I'll actually spot an animal, it was very helpful to have the pre-shooting mode. So what this does is that it starts recording a scene about 0.5 seconds before the shutter is released. Some unexpected moments that I captured were a bee in mid-flight and a monitor lizard scurrying up a tree. If you're into shooting landscapes aside from wildlife and sports, you'll also appreciate the panoramic short scene mode. This lets you shoot at 5 fps as you pan the camera across and it automatically combines up to 200 images to create a high-res panel image. This function worked pretty well even in handheld mode as the camera was able to stitch the different images together even though there was a bit of handshake. For this review, I paired my R7 body with the Canon RFS 18-250mm super zoom lens which weighs just 310 grams. The versatile length made the camera great for casual sports and wildlife photography. I was able to shoot a crocodile while standing on a distance on a bridge and even a blue jay high up in the trees. This super zoom lens also covers a larger focal length range of 29 to 240 mm in full frame equivalent. That said, the focal length wasn't quite enough for me to capture the animals that I saw on the night safari tram as the enclosures were a bit too far away. While I struggled to capture birds in mid-flight, the few images I caught of them at rest proved that the eye detection worked very well. Overall, the RF does plenty for a small and lightweight body. I found that it handled most shooting conditions well, with high-speed shooting, a strong battery life, and accurate AF tracking. Photos that came straight from the camera looked true to life thanks to the metering system with well-exposed images as well as very pleasant colours thanks to the auto-white balance. The only caveat, AF tracking worked best in daytime and less so in low light conditions. The lack of lens choices for the RF might make some seasoned photographers think twice unless they're fine with using full frame lenses with an adapter. With this kit costing $2,649, I'll say it's a pretty worthy investment for anyone looking to get into sports and wildlife photography for the very first time.